How you doing today, folks? Uh, I'm back working on this carburetor again, and while I'm happy to say that the carburetor is definitely running better than you know before I, I took it apart, uh, again, it, it wouldn't even start, so I cleaned a lot of the junk out. Um, I've run the machine for at least three to four hours since I rebuilt it, and I'm still having trouble with um, with my throttle at, at the high end, um, you know, it'll go up to 34, 3500 RPM, but as soon as I put a load on it, it's really dying down. And I'm just, uh, you know, I was baffled, and I may continue to be baffled as far as what it could be, um, but as I was, you know, doing research, um, I discovered that there's, there's something over here which I did not clean, and it has something to do with the accelerator. So the throttle, the thro oops, well, I just sprayed myself with gas. The throttle is down here, and um, when I move the throttle, this linkage is moving, and there's a diaphragm in here. So all I'm doing is, all I'm gonna do is just hope that um, maybe there's some bad gas in there, and maybe not enough gas is flowing through here as should be, when I go to full throttle. Uh, after this one, uh, the only steps I could think I could take would be to get a new, um, to get a new gasket kit and maybe replace some of those gaskets in there. And, um, you know, there is supposed to be a diaphragm in here too, so depending what that looks like. But, uh, you know, after that, all I could think of would be to, to have the governor adjusted. And I found, you know, it's amazing with the internet. You know, when I was growing up, you just didn't have it. But I went on the internet and I actually found the, the service manual for this carb and it explains how to set the governor, you know, for this machine, how to set the governor. It gives awesome schematics. Um, but it's just a matter of whether my, uh, my knowledge is enough to get this done. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fan on. It's gonna get noisy again, apologize for that. I, I just don't, uh, I don't wanna be breathing in the fumes from this stuff. And we'll go ahead and see if we can start cleaning this out. Let's go ahead and clean this off a little bit. Wow, that's tight. Like this piece is going to just spring right out at me when I take it off. There's definitely some fine passages on this thing that could uh, that could get gummed up. So you got the diaphragm, you got the diaphragm with the spring right on top there. And you got a little bit of rust on top of that. Some white powdery stuff. So we spritz this hole. Got a geyser there. I gotta make sure I put this little tiny O-ring back. And then there is just an ever so small passage here. So let's see if we can get this thing back together. So it looks like this piece would go here, and we'll close the throttle when we're doing this. We got this teeny tiny little O-ring. Looks like this teeny tiny O-ring wants to go right there. 
in this little channel. And then we got this spring that goes right there. So then we would just put that back on. Our screws on. But because I'm a worry ward, I'm going to just check it one more time. Yeah, everything will be good. So we'll just uh, we'll just line these up and put them back together. I always have to remember not to go super tight with my screws. Leave them just a hair loose so you can still maneuver the piece so you can line up the other screws. Sometimes you'll see me tighten them and back off a little bit because I forget or, you know, sometimes you want to just kind of push things down, get them where they need to be, and then loosen up a bit. I don't have a torque spec for these screws, but they were definitely tight. They were like redunculously tight. So let's see if I can do that without stripping them. With how tight these screws are, I'm surprised they're not using like a hex head screw. call that back together and I you know I really don't know if that part was dirty enough it didn't seem dirty at all to make a difference so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this carburetor back on the machine and then we'll um, we'll see if that's enough to do the job and I don't know if I zoomed in well enough last time but 24053 9-1 on the top, and I think that's the actual carburetor number. Then it says 77A, V, capital B, lowercase b. I have no idea what those numbers are, but I think for the carb, you're looking at 24053-91, and the carb is made by K-E-I-H-I-N. But let's see if I can get this back in. And I'll fire it up this time before I put the air filter back on and all the stuff on top and we'll see if we made a difference or if, uh, if I've gone beyond my knowledge of small engines. Well, I bet you guys thought that the next shot was going to be of me trying the mower. And um, I decided to take another look at the carb while I had it apart, and I was especially concerned about this one, this one piece right here. I know I, you know, the, I, I was concerned about the O-rings. So I went to my um, power equipment dealer, and I thought I was gonna end up ordering, you know, a, a whole gasket kit for the carb, just so I could get the little, um, the little, gaskets that go on this. The bottom one seems okay. No, the bottom one doesn't seem so good either. But the top one is definitely flexed out. And, you know, it's, it's probably my fault, or it is my fault, because I, I soaked that piece in um, carb cleaner, and I probably screwed up the plastic. And, you know, the guy at the shop said, usually you, you remove the gaskets before you douse stuff in carb cleaner. So, um, so I got these, you know, by some miracle, he actually had the parts I needed, and these little, uh, these little O-rings, um, those were 315 each. And just while I got you here, a couple things I gleaned, you know, I think I said in other videos, I enjoy going to the, to the dealers because they have knowledge, you know, yeah, you can go to, to Amazon or eBay, and buy stuff cheap, but if you don't have the knowledge, it's not gonna do you any good. So um, the fella at the power equipment store said that this is, this is called an accelerator pump, 
and I guess what happens is is when you when you give it the gas, it squirts a little a little more fuel into the uh, into the motor. I don't know if it keeps that fuel up. I think it's just like a temporary uh, boost of fuel. And then the fella also said that the carbs certainly look clean, um, which I was happy about. Um, but then he said that, you know, sometimes you go through all the cleaning of the carburetor and uh, you think you're good. But unfortunately, some of these passages are so small um, that no matter what you do, you just can't, uh, you can't get them cleaned out. I think I'm going to just go over the carb one more time and see if I see any of those tiny passages and just do my best to get them cleaned out. Looks like there's a couple here with balls on them. Well, if there are balls, the balls are stuck, so. So I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna go over this one more time really good and, um, you know, see if there's anything I may have missed. And then, uh, and then we'll go ahead and put um, fresh gaskets on this one piece here. And, you know, the other gaskets don't look too bad. Uh, you know, I just, uh, I just don't know what to say. I, I um, I don't want to have to buy a new a new carburetor. So we will be back and uh, we'll see where we are when we come back. I went through and cleaned the carburetor again. Um, all I did was just systematically go through with the, the carb cleaner, spritz a hole and see to make sure that it came out. Uh, I also took compressed air put compressed air in the holes and I mean I don't know what I could do to make this carburetor any cleaner. Um, the ultrasonic cleaners seem like pretty cool things but uh, it just seems like it's overboard. So um, we're gonna call this as good as it gets and if it doesn't work this time I, I just don't see how it could possibly be the, the carburetor. You know, these two gaskets on this little piece here are definitely uh, stretched out and destroyed from what I did. So we're just gonna pop them off and um, see if we can pop the new ones back on. I did squirt carb cleaner from this side and there's two holes, the two holes in the bottom, that's where it comes out from the bottom. And then if you squirt the carb cleaner from the top, it comes out these three holes. Well, I guess there's two sets of three holes on either side. So, you know, guys, I, I don't know what more I can do. And there was definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of white stuff in the, um, in the parts cleaner. So now we gotta make sure we keep our new gaskets separate from our old gaskets. So to the best of my knowledge, these are both the same gasket. And we just want to roll that on there. Maybe we'll start with this one and it'll set things, oops. Start with this one and it'll set the example. All right. So there's one. Oh, that's tight. I'm just going to go check the video and make sure that this one on the bottom wasn't there. I'm fairly certain it was in that groove, but better safe than sorry. 
Okay, it was definitely on that middle, that middle spot. Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. Something's not, uh, something's not lining up here. It's like rocking in the middle there. take some force to get that piece down and then just like last time I'm gonna tighten these in a crisscross pattern so I don't warp it So there we go, we've uh, taken it apart and cleaned it a second time. And uh, we replaced those two gaskets. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on the dingo now. And then we'll go ahead and try and start it before we put all the stuff on top and see if it made any difference. Okay guys, I got everything back on. I'm happy to say that I didn't lose the washer this time because I knew to look for it. And uh, let's crank her up and see what happens. any difference after you know going through the carburetor again and changing those two gaskets um, maybe it just has to be reset the governor or something but I think where we are now is um, it's a Saturday so on Monday I'll take it to the dealer see if they can mess with uh, the governor or you know if they have some kind of idea of what could be going on but I don't see how I could possibly uh, you know, get that carb any cleaner. And I guess the next step after that would be to just, um, you know, if the guys at the shop don't see anything straightforward, you, you know, you just dump a new carb on there. I think a new carb is around 300, but I could be wrong. And um, see if the new carb is the answer, and then you, you just go back and start again. But, um, you know, the machine's running great, but what happens is, is when it's under load, when I move it, it, it bogs, you know. It, um, it, it bogs more than I think it used to before it got gummed up. So, you know, I feel good that I got it started. I feel good that I'm very comfortable working on a Kohler carb now. Uh, every carb I work on is, is less intimidating. But um, I still have... You know, no idea what the answer is besides maybe the gas just went bad in one of those really teeny tiny passages and that's enough to cost us, you know, the, uh, cost us 
the carb. Um, the highest I got my RPMs there was like 3270. So, you know, we're not that far off. Um, I don't know, we'll see. So that's gonna do it for this video and um, I guess all I can do now is either at the end of this video or next, next time I talk to you, I'll let you know what the heck was going on with this card. Thanks guys, take care.